Hi everyone. So for today's modeling video, I'm going to show you guys how to use uh, two curves to kind of make a 3D mesh. And um, you can do this for all sorts of stuff, but one cool example I think would be to model the blade of a flamberge, also known as a flame bladed sword. So to start, I just have this picture of a flamberge from uh, Google, and it's one of the first ones that come up. All you have to do is just, all you have to do to get it in the scene is just, just go to image reference and then select it from your file system. Okay, so to start, we're just going to rotate this with the R key just so that it's um, RX so that it's pointing directly upward. There we go. And then we're going to add our first Bezier curve. So you, to do that, all we need to do is just do shift A curve Bezier. So let's actually see where it is so it's quite um hard to see so you kind of have to look for it uh the first thing we need to do is kind of rotate this to get into the correct orientation so our ry and you can hold control to rotate it to 90 degree in five degree increments until you rotate it 90 degrees and then um opening our empty up uh that's pretty good to start so we're going to click it and we're going to go into edit mode with tab and um uh, this the the key here is to kind of get this uh, Bezier curve to be the shape you need it to be. So to do that, we have these kind of on each vertex we select, we have these kind of handles, and depending on how you grab the handles, the overall Bezier curve will change. So depending on the rotation plus the magnitude of these handles, you're going to get a different curve. So let's start by placing this first handle, just a. Uh, a little bit lower here and then we'll take the second handle and put it here so currently um these two are way too big okay that looks better okay so uh the kind of the objective here again is to line up this kind of bezier curve along with the uh this wavy pattern in the blade Okay, that looks good. So now we're just going to extrude this top one. Uh, luckily here for this blade, after you get this kind of initial pattern, you can just kind of extrude all the way up and it's not too much of a difficulty. So let's start doing that. Okay, I think this is still a little too long. Okay, that looks better. So I'm just using E to extrude it and then left clicking when it's at the center point. And we can just do this all the way up. I'm also using a shift and middle mouse button click in order to pan my view upwards. Okay. And we can finish around there and then maybe go one more. All right. So there you go. This is our initial Bezier curve. So the next step is we need our second curve. And this uh, second curve should basically be like the cross section of whatever you're trying to um, model. So for me, it looks like uh, if I were to cut this blade with like a knife right right through the center here, it kind of looked like a very thin diamond shape. So let's get let's get a, a diamond shape in our scene. So to start, we're just going to add the cube, scale it down, go into edit mode, and we're going to go into wireframe mode with a Z. Select these four bottom vertices. Uh, delete them and then um, all we need to do is kind of rotate this 90 degrees I think I just extruded it okay uh, 45 degrees sorry about that and now you can kind of see that this kind of looks like the cross-sectional area uh, the last thing we have to do a couple a couple things before we finish we, so right now that orange dot is the center if we go to object we need to set origin to center of mass by volume. I think surface also works. 
And also, let's just apply the rotation just to be safe. So that's Control A rotation. And you can also do Control A scale, but that shouldn't be necessary. So now that we have the center in the middle, we can uh, make this kind of skinnier, just like that. And also, I think it, we should probably make it just a little uh, smaller in the y direction, and then maybe scale it in the x a bit. Okay, so uh, this is good, but uh, it's still a mesh, so we need to convert it to a uh, curve. So to do that, we just go to Object and go to Convert to Curve. And now, um, if you open this, uh, if you open up this context box, it let you keep the original. So let's do that just because of why not. So as you can see, this is our mesh, and now we have our curve. So okay. Now we click back on the Bezier curve that we used to make the blade and we click on these curve properties and you can go down to geometry and go down to bevel and then click object. And as you can see, let's just rename this. So we can call it our cross sectional. So we can call it our cross section. So now that we have our cross-sectional curve, we can just go to the curve uh, properties over here and go down to geometry, uh, bevel, and then, um, yeah, so geometry, bevel, and then object. And then here we can select the cross-section curve. And you can only select curves, not meshes. So when we select it, you'll notice that it's actually rotated, rotated uh, 90 degrees along the wrong uh, axes. And the reason why that happens is because if we look here, we have a 90 degree Y rotation from when we initially rotated the curve. So just like we applied the uh, rotation and uh, some other properties on the curve, we also need to do the same thing for this curve. Um, and then we get this shape. So we're almost there, but we still need to um, fix some issues. So one, we need to go to object and use shade flat. And this will uh, get it closer. And you'll see we have some geometry here that's a little um, messed up. So in order to fix that, uh, we can go to the original curve, and then you can uh, scale these vertices closer to each other, so they don't they no longer overlap. And then let's just check here. Okay, so it looks like that fixed uh, most of it. So let's go back to our front view. Uh, finally, let's just go to wireframe, and all we're gonna do is select these top few vertices oh first we have to convert to a mesh so to do that uh, same thing with the other uh, the way we converted the mesh to a curve but opposite we go to object convert to mesh and we're also going to keep the original here just in case we need it for later so now this is our mesh this is our curve So this is our uh, mesh here. It has this tri upside down triangle mark. So let's move it over. Uh, this is our curve. And let's put the mesh into place. And then finally, uh, we can now uh, work with it like we can any other mesh. So we're in wireframe. So I'm just going to merge these at the center here. This will be the tip. And then let's just, uh, using alt select here, we can kind of uh, just match these. And you only have to do this kind of for the tip because it's uh, difficult to, basically what, what happens is the cross-sectional curve is scaled at the same scale all along the blade. So you can't really, um, I, I don't know how to adjust the size as it goes up the blade. So if the blade starts off thick at the base and then gets uh, narrower, narrow, narrower at the top, uh, there's not much you can really do there other than just do some manual fixing. Okay. And there we go. So you can see that while it's not exactly um, the same as the blade, this is a pretty faithful replica, especially the top here where we did some manual editing. For example, if these aren't all aligned, 
uh, it'll mess up with the shading. But it's just a tip, so it shouldn't uh, prove too difficult to fix. But as for uh, the blade, it does save us a lot of work. Uh, the same process should work the same for any sort of object uh, which you can use for your um, Bezier curve. Uh, for example, especially useful is if you just want like some sort of tube, uh, you can just add a Bezier uh, circle. or just called a circle in this case. It's not a Bezier or anything. And let's scale this down a bit. Uh, a little more. And then if we go to our curve here, and we go to the um, object, we can select the circle. And you can see it'll just do the exact same thing, but it'll make this kind of tube shape now. So uh, super easy to kind of just change the cross-sectional curve once you've uh, constructed the main curve. Okay, so that's all for now. Uh, hope you guys learned something and got to see a pretty cool uh, blade being made. Thanks.